Brought to you by the Rugby Outlet Mall. Equipping you for freedom and connection through rugby. Find out more at RugbyOutletMall.com Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another great episode of Grow Rugby where we talk with people about the networks and opportunities that they have been able to find, experience, understand, and look to take advantage of via rugby. And look, I'm, I'm happy to be able to have you. I'm Gift Gift Time at Baylu. It's another great day, another great week. Uh, ironically, you know, it's weird. There's a lot going on in rugby while simultaneously nothing happening in rugby. Like, if you guys are paying attention to any of the rugby news, it's really interesting because obviously I think we can see it across sports because of the lack of live events happening and everything like that, that we're seeing money cutbacks. But it's really interesting because rugby kind of has this multi, this multi-part, this duality happening. And one half of it is them having to work to uh, be able to make these salary cuts because the possibility of not having rugby at the end of the year, not having all these tours that we're setting up right after this spring. Actually, it's technically where they've been starting now, but are coming off after this spring. Uh, sorry, that was my cat. If you're seeing it on the video, you see me move my. That was that was. I pushed my cat off the table because they're annoying. Yes, got cats. Whatever. It's it's a long story. But the point is, like, it is kind of wild that we have in one hand we have these salaries getting cut fifty percent, fifty percent, seventy five percent cuts of the salary for players. Which, to be honest with you, the fact that they're getting paid is impressive. Uh, not because I don't think guaranteed contracts should be fulfilled regardless of your situation. This is the fact that I would not have been surprised if rugby completely cut them. But thankfully, negotiations, and this was in Australia, New Zealand, it's happening. And obviously, you saw it in uh, England uh, as well. But the other half of it is like this running for the the highest office in world rugby, for chairman of world rugby. So if you don't know... Bill Beaumont, who is the incumbent uh, chairman of World Rugby, is up for re-election this year. And he actually has a real competitor in an Argentinian uh, named Augustin P- uh, Pichot. And uh, this guy seems like he's got some solid support. Uh, looks like he wants to be able to properly create focus and around uh, the Americas, South and North America, as well as being able to provide a better aid for other developing rugby countries because it's felt uh, a lot. And I, I honestly, even I've noticed that I always thought that World Rugby had a beef against, you know, the U.S. and then the rest of it. I, and, and when I mean beef by the U.S. against the U.S., as in we were only good enough for the commercial use, but we're not really good enough to... Um, to make into to help into real competitors, though I think a lot of it is also ourself doing. So I, I don't hold it that much, but I did. I was like, eh, world rugby ziffy. But Augustin P- Pichot wants to actually work to make developing countries, developing rugby countries, into higher grade countries. Obviously, help the Oceanas, the islands, Samoa, Tonga, and uh, Fiji. And so we have this impact happening across the board. And it's going, the, the voting is actually supposed to start on the, uh, April 27th. And we're supposed to find out the actual voting on May 15th. So if everything goes personally, I think it'd be dope to see something different. Like, I want to see a non European, a non UK person in the position. Now, mind you, there might have already been there, but not in the time that I've played. So as far as I know, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. <laughs> but you know it'd be really interesting to see what would happen if you have that changeover um and that, that'll be huge especially you know across the, the bounds of rugby but you know i'm still learning it so you know take this little political element with a grain of salt but it, it should it would be interesting to see any change of pace and see how that does with the overall culture because i think after this whole covid thing is like rugby's business model should be completely adjusted. I mean, completely readjusted from this government-based subsidized variation to a far more uh, egalitarian, you know, capitalistic version. 
the Americanness kicking in. The Nigerianness and the Americanness is kicking in on it. So uh, there's that, and then even <laughs> add to that a little bit. Apparently, Fiji uh, is put in a bid to be part of the advising bodies in rugby, uh, which is these are like the 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 eight or twelve. Uh, decision making unions in the world that work to make part of the decisions for everything else. So the interesting part of it is there's this guy named Francis Keane who was uh, the chairman for Fijian rugby and uh, the controversy that comes with him is that this dude apparently had a manslaughter charge in 2007 and people are now fighting against him actually having a chance to be in this position, though uh, the arguments being made is that it's the Fijian Union getting the position and not this guy specifically. But apparently, this is being brought up, and he said some other homophobic stuff, and it's just like, "Yo, rugby, you guys trying too much." But even here in the domestic space, we're not. I mean, we're still talking about like obviously USA rugby restructuring right now. Within college, we're starting to see this wave of uh, D2 schools, these Division two schools now moving into Anscro, which is the National Small College Rugby Organization. Ayo! I remembered it! Uh, and, uh, um, and a lot of people mistook it as D3 when the reality is it was just universities that had small population schools and hence less opportunity to be able to create stable team, but they're actually really good teams. A lot of great players have come out of that. I mean, Kayvon Williams, uh, who played for USA Rugby Sevens, came out of New Mexico Highlands, and that was a, uh, that was one of the, uh, uh, what do you call it? That's an end scrow team that just killed it. Uh, so, And they were competitive with anybody. So, um, but yeah, you know, we're seeing this wave. So basically it looks like you know, the collegiate side really is taking its distinguishing markers, and I think it's creating real lines uh, that will make for commercial lineage, uh, which will be great. Uh, I'm ex- also interested to see what's going to happen with the women's side, but I have a feeling like a lot of that women's side will also get uh, inter- uh, will also get absorbed by Enscro on the uh, D2, D3 side, and then for the D1, D1 elite side, they'll probably match up with... Um, uh, college rugby of America that currently holds like D1A men's rugby, D1A men's college rugby, as well as D elite D1 women's rugby, uh, women's college rugby. So it's going to be interesting to see what these uh, shifts are going to be. I mean, it's it, you know from a competitive standpoint, really more so from a commercial standpoint, less so from a competitive standpoint, because we're still going to see the same regionality basically, but it's not going to have the influence of USA Rugby. So it'll actually be what happens with the championship games and how these things get played out, and that's where the commercialization is going to be. I think from the lower region, we're going to definitely see much more in terms of the actual teams working amongst themselves and creating the competitions uh, within uh, a tighter space so that they can be able to function much more fully. But hopefully we can help them be able to develop that and be able to develop a more commercial element to it. That something that USA Rugby was just not able to because you're, you're, it's too too small a body to hold that many uh, components. It's too it's too it's too many moving parts for one entity. You have to have it split up into other entities. So what this next year, 2020 fall or and or all of 2021, 2022 is going to be interesting to see what these movements change. And then we also had some additions into the. Uh, USA Rugby Hall of Fame. I don't remember who any of them are. I wish I could tell you, but I know one of them is one of the women from the 1991 squad, uh, the the World Cup Women's World Cup 1991 USA squad. I think she was a prop, but I don't remember exactly. So, um, you know, go look it up. I'm just trying to. I want to make sure you guys know what's happening. But, anyways. We got a great guest here today. Uh, this one was really a favorite of mine. I've been following her on Instagram for the better part of the last maybe four years, five years, no, maybe four years or so. Uh, really great uh, rugby player, plays for Switzerland. 
Her name is Angela Elena, and she was an amazing talk, really great when it comes to focusing on women's rugby and the impact, especially from out of a country like Switzerland that doesn't get, you know, you don't really think rugby in Switzerland, I mean, you think neutrality, uh, you almost were like, yo, is rugby maybe too violent for your neutrality, but apparently it's not, so it kind of works out, but she had a great story talking about her time as playing, getting to that point, and how it affected her personal life, because rugby is her religion, and she'll say that on multiple occasions out here, and it was really dope to be able to listen to, and get into, and really just like, drive all the way in, uh, you know, and look, there's more talking about Fiji, like, you, you guys are gonna hear, this is a great conversation, definitely take the listen, and also, please, don't forget to go check out Rugby Outlet Mall. That's RugbyOutletMall.com. That is the place where we are providing the mechanism and trying to equip people for freedom and connection through rugby on this rugby adventure, man. Rugby is a network. It's a social network. It's a cultural network, and we want to make sure that you're in place. We have things in there ready for you. We got regular gift time rugby merch. We got HBCU Rugby Classic merch. And, of course, we have a slew of other things that we feel would be best to either help those who are just entering into the sport, help those who are looking to travel outside of their domestic region, and just help those who are looking to have a much stronger focus on, on showing and emulating that rugby cultural l- movement and lifestyle. So, uh, if guys, please check out RugbyOutletMall.com. And for you guys, uh, we have a coupon code, Rugby Stimulus for 10% off of any Gift Time Rugby merch. That's any Gift Time Rugby merch. That is R-U-G-B-Y Stimulus. S-T-I-M-U-L-S L-U-S M-U-L-U-S And uh, you guys can get 10% off of any gear that we have. So, guys, check it out. You guys are going to love it. But in the meantime, Angie Elena, check it out. All right, everybody, I got another amazing VIP guest for you guys today. I don't know if you guys have had the chance to witness this IG influencer, this magic that's happened out of uh, Switzerland, one of the Swiss national team women's players. Angie Elena, Angie, thank you so much for being able to take time to be with us today. Thank you, too. Thanks. I'm super excited. (laughs) Look, you know, I I have to say, like, right off the bat, um, you know, I you became one of my favorite IGs uh, to watch for a multitude of reasons. Like a lot of people will talk on the surface, but I think one of the things that have been one of my favorite things about you is your undying deep intense love <laughs> for rugby <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely absolutely it's bigger than everything in my life is rugby that's true yes that's true yo and look it's it's not even just like the love because a lot of people will say they love but it is it is the presentation it like you said it, it seems to go through how you live your workout your daily lifestyle, your philosophies, it kind of proceeds and all that. And I love the way that you present it because it's so unique to what other rugby people have done. And really, this is over the last, what, three, four years that it has been dynamically different than what I would have normally seen and what I always love to be able to see from rugby people, creating a self-brand that, that stands out from what we would consider as traditional rugby stuff. Yeah. So I think so. It's it's really also a point of um, a, a girl in this kind of sport. I mean, we we work in a national team. We next to the to the um, field we have to work because we have not this um, support um, as maybe male male player. So um, you only can go to this way if you really really love. 
and um, have passion for this sport. Otherwise, you can't work that hard. So um, you really, really have to put that in your life, in your lifestyle, in your philosophy, that you can make uh, dreams like this come true. So yeah, I think this is one of these points why I really put that a little bit, sometimes for some people a bit, a bit too much in my life, for over the top everything. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you know, in the States, it's always about over the top. So it's something that, you know, it, it, it kind of pulls away from what people would typically do from rugby. But it's that over the topness that makes it stand out more. So before we kind of continue with what you're doing now and, and what you've done, what I want to kind of get to know where it all started from. You know, uh, I know you've told the story a couple of times, but I actually now I have a chance to actually talk to you instead of translate through Instagram. So I'm going to go into it. <laughs> um, so, you know, kind of for you, Angie, like how did this how did you start with rugby? How did your interest begin open up to this sport? Because Switzerland isn't exactly the biggest rugby hub in the world. Yes, um, it's like. I was, since a, a girl, I like to um, uh, do the stuff that boys like. So I like to uh, fight outside, uh, go on top of trees and come home, was dirty. And the problem was that I like the nice dresses, but I go out with the nice dresses and come home dirty. So my mom was, um, was hard time for my mom. So, um, and uh, then I go growing up and, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know how you say that. Do you have some uh, group for children that they go together to wood and make some funny stuff together? And we played their rugby. Mm -hmm. And um, I was really in love about this, but I don't know that we have that in Switzerland too. So on a home party, I met a girl, she had bloody knee. So I go to her and say, why, why do you have blood in And she said, ah, you know, I play rugby outside on the street. And I said, what? You play rugby? I'm in. And on the next uh, Tuesday, I start to play rugby. And from this day on, I fall in love with rugby. And I never stop. Now it's uh, 50, almost 16 years ago. And I can't be without them. It's, yeah. That's, and, and, and. I would say I, I like to I like how it's it all started with the girl with the bloody knee. Like you know, if if it were, what if it had just been a little bruise? Would the love of rugby been able to go? Over there? It needs to go over the top. This is the I now understand where this is all origin from. It was interesting. I mean, yeah, it's cool. It's something special. It's different. Oh, and and I I agree. You know, even here in the states, I know for me, I started. Uh, when I was 22, and I'd always known about rugby because American football kind of derives from it. But whenever I started, it was, I thought it was like an archaic sport. So I, I thought it was one of those sports like fencing that people kind of like do, but it doesn't, it doesn't serve anything major. And again, obviously, I think fencing does have it. But in my mind at that time, I thought it was like dress up or something like Hey, people do old sports because they want to remember it. But when you get into it, all of a sudden you're like, wait, this is, this is a whole different world here. Like, I don't, I don't think this is being talked about enough to its extent. So, this is exact, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, continue, please. This is exactly that why I love rugby also. I mean, um, maybe in my past when I was really a young kid, I was not really the... the um, cool kid. I was most playing alone or with my brother and or with the boys and um, I was not this girl that um, was outside with other girls and playing with, with, with um, um, dolls or something and um, then I grow up and I, I really feel some different because I was strong but the, the normal girls were skinny and, and, and soft and and, and then I was different. I was loud. I had temperament. I was full of power. And, and when it comes somewhere, I was loud and people say, Whoa, be quiet and stuff like this. And it was, it was like, I always feel like I'm different, but I'm a normal or normal girl. So, and then I come to this rugby club and I come to that girl and I say, hi, I'm Angie. And I was scared 
that maybe they say, oh, what are you doing here? But from the first moment on, I, I was a part of them. I was a part of a big family. And the special thing is, they loved me because I was strong, loud, and temperamental. So the first time they really loved that stuff, what I, what I am. So um, what you can do, what, what you can love more than something that loves you how you are. And don't try to change you. And this is something what I really love in rugby. Some girls come to me and say, yeah, I would like to play rugby, but I'm too skinny. I say, no, for every position, for every part of, of, a, of the field, we need someone like different. So you find your job on the field. And um, this is so amazing. So you never will hear in the rugby, you are too fat, too small, too, too, too strong, too, too big, too loud. Hey, come on, we play rugby together. When we put all these different people together, we have the best team. And no, that's that's a hundred percent it. And and it's like you said, it's such a unique component because it is it is all fitting. It is a almost essentially a one size fits all because there is a value for it. The only thing that sucks is that you have to run a lot. So that part you're gonna end up kicking in one way or another. But even at that, it becomes purposeful regardless of whatever your size or your talent is and I, I remember I had the same thing for me you know I, I've been one that I've always been in sports in some way shape or form but uh, when it got into rugby it wasn't ironically it wasn't so much the field play because the field play was really similar to me like American football it was like oh we go we hit you know whatever that's that part is fun but it was whenever we did a cult, got into the culture, and I think we had a tour that was at this, uh, this, this event called Pitch a Tent, a social rugby tournament, sevens tournament, like in the middle of nowhere, just nothing but rugby people and like 15 fields and like camping. And I got to that place, and it was at that moment where I was just like, yeah, no, 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 no. I've actually found my place. Like, I, this is... This is what I have worked my entire life to get to this level of, of being, of having that access where everybody is just cool. Everybody kind of has, is on the same page. Everybody's crazy, but in the same way. It's, it's that right kind of craziness. And I, even whenever you're talking about, whenever you were saying about your loudness, I'm like, yeah, yeah, she was tapping into the, that African, that Latin side. <laughs> I was like, all right, so it is genetic in us. All right, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> maybe also it's a problem because I start maybe with a, a bit of kind of different sport. Um, when I was um, really uh, young, my mom think maybe I help you to get a little bit more sensitive and I'm um, not walking through the room like an elephant. So I start with ballet. So can you imagine me with a pink uh, dress, um, dancing ballet? I try it really hard. I really try it hard. I was not bad. I mean, I have the muscle. Uh, my my legs were strong. Yeah, but, strong. Well, <laughs> it looks maybe like a little bit weird. So I feel not really ever like a ballerina. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a lot of of special um, uh, uh, theater. And um, the the girls always can be princess and thieves and. And I was always the man. So I, I feel like I'm a girl. I want to be a girl. <laughs> why, why you don't accept it? So I start to stop to play, uh, dance ballet. I danced three months of, uh, three years of flamenco. But it's like, you have to do something what someone says. Right. Okay. In rugby, sometimes you hear your <laughs> trainers screaming sometimes. And sometimes I just understand, Angie, go take the ball and go through. So I do that, and I think I do, don't do that that really bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> yo, but that's real. Look, you know what? It sounds like when doing all that ballet, even though ballet wasn't the one for you, it made you probably have better rugby feet because you have a better absolutely. understanding of your balance. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. For the for the. Um, for the start is good to make something like this because you start to feel your body to start you to accept your body and 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 see what you can do without your body so 
with you, buddy. I mean, this is for sure not a bad start, of course. Right. Right. And, 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 and it's always been interesting kind of seeing, again, we go back into how we all these things kind of fit in together into creating this, this rugby, what we are able to create on the pitch and on and off the pitch, namely. So, all right. So you get part of this rugby team and this rugby team, this is based on, you know what, I didn't even tell people where you were from. Well, if you can, you know, uh, uh, let us know also where you're from. This is uh, the bad hosting of me. I'm so interested in what to get into the story. <laughs> so so I, I born in Colombia and I get adopted to Swiss parents in Switzerland. And I start 15 years ago with the um, town club. It's the Dangels. Represent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, then um, we have no national team in Switzerland when I start. It was st uh, first a part of the French part because the French part was more involved with rugby from um, France. So they start to put a little bit clubs together for something like kind of national team. And they play, when I'm not wrong, two, uh, nine, yeah, all that. Long time ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, 2000. And no, I don't remember. Anyway, uh, um, then um, the or original Swiss national team was the first time really on, uh, um, with the title of national team was 2011. Okay. And I really start from beginning to play for the national team when they cr start to create. So first we, we travel around um, um, part of Switzerland, play with Germans, with France um, teams. And um, yeah, I, I remember one, one uh, team, uh, what, with one team we traveled to Belgium. And um, I was like, I always see props like my size in Switzerland. So we traveled to Belgium and we come inside and there was so huge girls <laughs> on the table and dancing. And I was thinking, what are I doing here? <laughs> and my friend said, yes, Angie, that's the real forwards in Europe. And I said, okay. Yeah, I was a little bit... I was a little bit scared, but it's amazing. <laughs> and I love it. I still love it. I, I was going to say, like, this had to, in the fear, you had to have been thinking at the same time. It's like, so this is what everybody has been saying to me. <laughs> it's like, I get it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. Oh. So, okay. Yeah. So going from, from Tao's, Tao's is the one that you came to go into the national team. That process, whenever you first started playing, like how did you end up finding where you, you, you your, your spot on the team in terms of like knowing where you play or you mastering or getting to know, you know, your position best? Like, was it something that they just kind of threw you in and you kind of figured it out along the way? Or was it something that they kind of t developed you and cultivated you into uh, any specific position or place? Like, what was that, that that start before even getting into that, uh, that Swiss national team? So before I start um, playing, um, or before I really start, um, I was um, big. I have 19 kilos more, ni na not 19 kilos more muscles, 90 kilos of, 19 kilos more of fat. And so, you know, girls or people they are a little bit more massive put it on the front row right. so and but i love it i really love this position i mean i'm not fast i mean i i try it out a lot of times i mean i was in Fiji and i was thinking wow i'm so slow <laughs> this is crazy i mean in switzerland i'm slow but in Fiji, i am um, yeah i stand still for them so I, I, I started playing in the front row and I, I found out that, um, okay, it's good to have mass. Uh, it's good to have more body. But I find out in this time, it's cool to have 
um, more musket because you can do more. So um, I start to love this, this, this rugby so much, this sport so much that I say to myself, okay, I want more. I want more. I don't want just um, be do the job in a scrum. I want to do more. So I, I start to get fit and um, I start to work hard. I have three times really a hard break in my rugby career because I broke three times my ligaments. But um, for me, was that never, never a stop? I mean, I know I have a lot of injuries. I mean, the ligaments is just the operation what I did. I have some other um, um, injuries, but that was never a stop for me. It was more uh, like, okay, reset, work hard to come back and come harder back. Nothing is, is danger than someone who come back and wanted more than before. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, and look, we, we always say, especially when it comes to sports, it's not how you get hit, it's how you react afterwards, you know? Yeah. Can you get back up? Can you make it, make it happen from there? And, you know, that's one of those things that, you know, you've always been able to present well within your IG. I remember, you know, the, actually, I remember both ACL injuries that you had presented. I, at least, I remember at least one, the latest one that you did, and you, you, posted your process of coming back you know being up on the leg you're still working out you're still fighting away i'm a lift weights you know you know and the slow process of running and doing the workouts but the thing was the um the being able to be vulnerable and also show this aspect of yourself to be able to see like yo this is the development as much as i love this sport this is the cost and the cost comes with work and if you're willing to do the work, hey, we can come back and you'll be good. And if it's you're not, then, you know, you can sit and you can chill. It's not necessarily a bad, but it's like, yo, this is my your passion. You've always been able to show that. So uh, I have to say it's been something that's really appreciated. And, uh, you know, and it kind of leads into my next question. Oh, oh, what were you about to say? No, I just want to say it's easy to say I can't or I t I'm tired or I I have no energy anymore. It's hard to say, okay, I do it. It's hard to say, I, I, I never give up. It's, it's a hard way. And I cry like a little baby some, a lot of times. And I was not the stronger that you see on Instagram. It was really, I was on the end. And I, but I, I, deep inside, I know something. To give up, it's not an option. So. And that's, like I said, that's real. Like that, that is as much rugby as it is life. Um, and and we, how we kind of just go about it. I, I love that. And again, it's, it's the honest. Win the game when you lie down after a tackle. You only win the game when you stand up and go, go again. Exactly. Unless, unless you jump on your attacker's back and never let them release the ball. <laughs> you take that yellow card for the team. <laughs> I get my first yellow card in Fiji, yeah? <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to get into Fiji in a little because there is a, you have a whole, there's a whole line of questions I got for you when it comes to Fiji because there is a, look, there's love for Fiji and there's love for Fiji. <laughs> you are strong on the second one. But yeah. kind of before we get to that, I, I wanted to ask, you know, uh, when you got onto the Swiss national team, and obviously what you did with Cal, and you talk about the exposure that you had to these different rugby players, but you started officially playing on this national stage. From where Swiss, the Swiss national team was when you started back in 2011 to where it is now, what, are some of the, what is the growth that you've seen within the team itself? Yeah, it's really it's really interesting to see how we grow. It's still we are still far away from the dream what we really have. But one day I can say I was the, one of the first growing team. That is amazing. But still, I mean, in Switzerland you have um, a lot of levels of rap, uh, of of sports. So the first sport are the sport that you get a lot of money and they are really famous people. I mean, I talk from Roger Federer and all the really high level of people. And then we have lower um, sports level like um, sport they are not so um, random. And then we have women sport. So it's a really big fight to come to a other level and and for me um 
I can I can start to say every day, oh man, it's not nice, it's not nice, but that helps me nothing. So I try to do that what I can. So um, I was really happy when the first time we hear that Australia was the first girl, uh, woman team that gets the same money as um, the men's. So this is the first step in our life. So um, they start and I can just hope and, and try my best that we get a little bit more famous in Switzerland and we maybe in, 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 in the future we have the same respect and the same, um, the same, how you say that, publicity of, of, of people than, than um, other sports in Switzerland. So, um, and it's interesting to see how uh, we start. I mean, the, the first time that we start playing rugby, we have, everybody has different dresses and um, uh, it's, it's, uh, we look like, yeah, just uh, some girls, they come together for a funny weekend. So uh, it's, it's a lot of work and um, this is still what I may, maybe try to do a little bit in um, social media. I mean, um, I try to show the people that um, rugby is a real hard sport for athletic people. You, so you have to work hard to play really on a high top level. And um, also, I, I want to come back from, uh, away from this little thing that people see. A lot of people still think that girls who play rugby, they are big, fat and have short hair. And it's not true. Yeah, it's it's true. I mean, it's still people think that. And right. um, I, I try to show that you can be a girl, that you can be sexy, that you can be um, uh, that you can be everything, and that you just the only only thing what you have to be is in your heart you have to be a rugby player and you have to be a sport. Um, how you say that? Uh, an athlete. Uh, uh, an athlete, exactly. Mm. Then you can do everything. So this is what I want to show a little bit like with them. Yeah. You know, I, and, and, and I think that's real. And look, you know, one of the things that I, I, I can say is, you know, I think the struggle when it comes to rugby has always is widely, widely consistent outside of like your biggest rugby countries, you know, New Zealand, England, France, et cetera. But even in, still in those, they, they still have it. And especially then even more so in women's sport, how much it can be narrowed because, you know, culturally, we are, th things are put into this position. If you're, as a woman, if you're too strong, people then become, like, intimidated, and you have to be, you know, just a, just a single, almost trollish kind of character where it's like, yo, that's, that's not even accurate, you know? And it, it's like, yo, there's a range, but everybody is not, is, has their place. And so to be able to constantly have to battle against that in culture let alone have to battle against it within the rugby niche, again, battling within it, obviously within your own, like even in the gender, because I'm have to assume that other women who are going like, oh, you play rugby are going to be like, oh, you, you must be, you must be like dealing with like 500 pound or whatever people and just this stereotypical look. So, you know, it, it's impressive to do that. So, Whenever you decided to start working on your Instagram, and this is the one that's always been interesting, what was the process that you had with it? Because clearly you work a very provocative, very empowering, very inspirational, and very focused kind of Instagram brand. And so for you, like, what was the, what was the process or what was the influence that made you say, hey, I want to go in this direction because this is... Uh, you know, this is what will teach, show my message that I want to be able to present properly. Which I guess um, I was talking with a friend. Um, I mean, I'm a, bit, I'm a little bit older, <laughs> and I'm talking with a friend. I said, I don't understand why, why we have not got a lot of girls. They want to play this sport, um, and I feel like I, I see a lot of girls. They st standing on the streets and hanging around and. They have no future. They have no, no, no inspiration. Just maybe some, just some, some celebrity from Hollywood, and it's not really real. It's my. I mean, I mean, they, they, they are real, but they have a lot of management behind them. And um, I think like 
I see me myself in these girls to have it. Um, yeah, you are maybe not accept everywhere because you are maybe a little bit uh, different or you have too much energy and then you have nothing where you can put this on so um and i think like um some girls or every people i mean um need something who is special who take take them and um and uh help them to to feel herself good how they are are and um I mean, a lot of sport, you have to be maybe some kind of type of person, but in rugby is that not. So I, I talk him, I say him, I, I, I would like to, to inspire more people to play rugby, more girls especially, um, that they find uh, the same um, support in her life as me and they find that they are not alone or not, not different. They are something really special and important and unique and he said yeah angie you have to go to instagram i said what <laughs> <laughs> instagram it's the new way to to touch people to 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 find people and i said okay i start and I what year was this that you started sorry i start by myself yeah he showed me the instagram and i i start to make some pictures and and i i, I think about what i want to represent so i want to show that um you are beautiful you are super you are strong you you are some unique and you can be yourself and you are super and this is for me the most important uh, point in my in my instagram uh, stuff um you don't have to be size zero you ha don't have to to be perfect in your face or somewhere you are perfect in your own life and um this is what i want to show the people and um next to them that helps me to feel myself so um okay in them that i play rugby because there i never hear you are too fat you are too ugly you are too big you are too loud i never hear that in rugby I was always a part of them, and this is what I want to show. Okay, some people can say now, why you show you almost half naked? Okay, then I come with this point, like, when you go to Mailand, and you see the half Italian team from Dolce Gabbana just in the underwear, what do you say? And then the girls say to me, oh my God, they get crazy and scream on the screen. I say, yeah, and why you give me not the right to do the same? What is the difference because between to have to are a man and to are a girl? We have the same fucking rights. So if I want to show my body and want to show you that doesn't matter, and my body is not perfect, but it is okay how it is. And this is what I want to show. You don't have to be the perfect abs, the perfect legs. It's okay when you have scars, when you have a little curves it's okay man it's good how you are and this is my message and i love that and like i said it, it's something that it, it's come through really clearly uh and and i and, and i mean that for real like it, it's come through very clearly whenever you post between your messaging to to the pictures because sometimes it is you it's it's not just it's not just i'm showing this it's yo this is catching your attention and this attention now is allowing you to actually pay attention to the message. It might take a little bit for you to get to that message, but you're seeing the message and the consistency is all we need is for you to pay attention to the message and the rest will take care of itself. Yes. And if you, if you don't show your body um, and you, you give someone the feeling that this is wrong, you give automatically the people the feeling that they are not good how they are. Right. So, when you say why you do that i say why i can't do that right. i mean what is wrong on them it's my body i born naked and i die naked <laughs> i mean yeah it's true, it's true. Huh? So it's true when i when i when i say someone oh don't do that because it's weird so you put yourself in a in a in a, in a box in a box and and think it's not okay to be normal right it, it, and this is wrong. 
Exactly. It's it's what I. It's always the the concept of uh, a stigma, uh, mm-hmm. and the best way to end a stigma is to reveal it. Like yes. the biggest vulnerability that you have is the one that you have to try and hold back because of the fact that it inherently goes into the mind of saying it is uh, a negative when it's not. Especially whenever it's natural, it's it's not a negative. It's that's you. You are literally being you at your literal form, and that I think is what becomes empowering, uh, not just to women, it's to guys as well too. But the key is that it's empowering because it does give permission to say, hey, I can be strong in myself, right? And it's still a little bit in our minds that boys can do that and girls not. Yeah. Because it's not, seems to be a girl like this, like this, or you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not it, perfect English, but... The, the classic... Oh, your English has been on point. Believe <laughs> you. It is better than a lot of people here in the U.S. on its own. So, <laughs> I learned I learned English on the rugby field. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I come to my first training and they all speak English and I was thinking, ooh, okay. And I start to le- learn English. And I talk English. And then a, a trainer from England... Um, call me for a weekend to work um, for personal training and I come to, to him and we talk, maybe we train our, we work out for two, three hours and then we, we buy some coffee and he said, you know, your English is so bad. I think Yoda was your teacher. <laughs> wow. Wow. <Yeah>. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, since then I say, okay, you're the my teacher. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, those those are kind of things where you go like, hey, man, let me hear your German. Let me hear your Swiss. All right, you come back with me. You're in my place. Why are you telling me to act like you? <laughs> it's okay. No, I was in UK. I was in UK. Oh, you were in the UK. But you know what? It doesn't matter. You know what? You say. I mean- I can travel around the whole world and people understand me. I mean, it's okay. And that's all. That's what matters. (laughs) Man, so actually kind of even segmenting into that point and it kind of builds into Fiji. You know, one of the things that really have been impactful for me when it comes to rugby has been the global aspect of it. You know, in the U.S., uh, it's not that I've never traveled before. I have my, my family's from Nigeria, but in the U.S., it's very easy to be locked inside the country just because we have so much space, and our country is literally like five different countries put together into one. So it's very easy to just be like, look, I'm going to just go to the northeast of here and deal with these crazy people up here or being the south or the west or whatever. But whenever I was able to actually start like going to play and do stuff overseas, it kind of changed the whole realm of how rugby was for me because it made it not just more open, but it made a, a line of similarity that seems to be consistent across. There's like a cultural rugby line that we all kind of adhere to, whether it's in the way that we do our socials or how we deal with uh, on-field issues. But then there's this cultural scope that comes in uh, and that makes it unique, this cultural box this uh rugby box that is now unique to these countries so for you because you're in a country that literally is far more connected to other countries you know between here to eurasia and everything consisting you know for you what was your reaction to being able to go and and see more countries outside of maybe the few that you would have been to uh just being in the middle of europe um I, I, I always follow some rugby channel and, and stuff like this. And I see the, the Fijian team and I was really touched with some stuff. I, I come back of this. But at least I was, I was here and I was feeling like I want more. I, I, I see Switzerland with rugby. I see a lot of years of rugby and a little bit of Europe with the national team. But I want more. And especially I want to be a better rugby player and I think like I, I, I have to make a step so um, I was um, traveling around and I meet some Fijian people and they talking about her lifestyle and her rugby love and it was really touched me and then I see um, 
uh, with a friend of uh, Fiji. I see with him together a video about Jerry from Fiji. And um, wow, it was really like um, that interview. I was crying like when I watched Lion King. Really, I was so touched. It was like this moment when he said, I go to my mom and I say, I want to play rugby. And she say, okay, um, and go to the kitchen and take the money, what she saved for his boy, that he have a future and say, this is the money. Do something with that, that you can live with them. And he buy some rugby shoes and um, tape with, a, with uh, something on the, the shoes, like fork and knife and say, okay, this is my fork and knife and I will work on it. And I was really like, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's also now, I mean, I feel like it's really. <laughs> feel it, you feel it welling up. It's, like, it's building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I said, wow. And I, I see them, it was also interview with, with the national team, Sounds team, they win gold. And, and I see how the people live there and what rugby means to them. And I say, yeah. I go to Fiji. Yes. <laughs> and I, I try to first to buy myself, to, to take some contact. And then the manager of my uh, national team, Froni, she comes to me and say, you want to go to Fiji? You know that I have um, names everywhere on the world about rugby. And I say, Okay. <laughs> Hook me up. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> so um, she um, she get some contact with, for me to to um, Fiji with Frank Bouvier. Um, uh, it's a big name in, in Fiji. It's a French name. Uh, it's a French man um, who um, support rugby player there and has, has also a own team. So um, and uh, there was the point. Um, how long I go to Fiji? I say okay, four months. Um, I want to learn something really, and I go to my boss and my work, and I say, um, you know, rugby is my life. I have the chance to go to Fiji and play rugby, and she say, yeah, I can't give you off from work for four months. We have too much girls; they are pregnant, so you have to cancel your job. Uh, I was. It was, it was really hard for me because I, I, I love my job. And, but then it was the point that I say, no, I, I am the own creator of my future. And this is my way. Rugby is my life, my religion, my love, my philosophy, my heartbeat. I go. So I stop my job. 12 o'clock in the night, I take the ticket of OK with tears in my eyes. And that was my way. So wow. I traveled alone to Fiji and have the fucking best time of my life. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, like, what, what, what was it? I mean, I've, I've heard so many things about Fiji. So my experience with Fijians have always been when I – there was the first time whenever I saw them on the field, and I was like, yo, these cats are scary because they're so fast and they're so strong. And then I'll talk to them off the field. I'm like – Yo, how are you guys the sweetest, most peaceful, kindest people I've ever seen? I'm like, this, is, this doesn't make sense. You're supposed to either be, like, super loud from being on the field or all this quietness should not make you this, you're, like, powerful on it. Like, you are, you are a, 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 um, a paradox in, in for us. But, you know, for you, like, being in Fiji itself, being in, in, in the land that they are, like, what – what was that experience like for you? Fiji is the heaven of rugby. It's my paradise. When I die, I want to go on a place like this. <laughs> no, it's like, so I, I come there and on every place, people playing rugby. On every place. Girls, boys, kids, old humans, everyone plays rugby. And um, they are always smiling. And it's not the fake smile like you see on Instagram. So it's the deep smile deep inside of your heart. And I... Soulful smile. I don't know. It's 
wow and and i i go to my first training i travel on the morning i come there and then at the um, afternoon they say yeah all right all right already we go to the first training i say okay i bring my rugby shoes so i come to the field of course <laughs> with like i don't know 100 100 people and or everybody was playing rugby wow. yeah there was it's more like they started a little bit with touch rugby. So there's a group of people, there's a group of two people, and there's a group of people. So I was, I think I was the only one with rugby shoes. The rest was with flip flops and no shoes. Wow. And the hardest thing is when people are running faster with flip flops than yourself with rugby shoes. <laughs> You're like, how are you getting so much grip? Where is this momentum coming from? <laughs> I don't know, and, and I was really shy, and I shame myself when they say, yeah, this is Angie, she played for the Swiss national team, and I think, no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't say that. Please say that I'm from, I don't know, from the mountains of nowhere, and I can't play rugby. It was, wow, and the passes of them, when we say we make a short pass in Switzerland, it's maybe like one meter, one and a half. Mm -hmm. I was short passing Fiji is like the whole field. <laughs> yes, believe me, I work wow. really hard to have a little bit next to them to play. It was wow. I mean, I'm a prop. I'm a prop. Fifteenth prop. I mean, sometimes I play for fun sevens, and I play with my team on Coral Coast Seven yeah. against Japan, China. Hong Kong and Fiji. I mean, <laughs> I will never, never do this again in my life. I'm a 15th pro. <laughs> I, I make my, I make deadlifts with 120 or 130 kilos, but I run like a snake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, but the, <laughs> uh, look, but you know what? It was just, it's the fact that you got to, you, you're, you're on the field. Because look, there was no chance. Like, they're going to make everybody look, everybody looks like stone whenever you're going against a Fijian or you're going against that much competition because, like, it's almost like genetically predispositioned to be rugby proficient. Like, it's, it's God, nature, rugby. I feel like that is the, the reference point for, for Fiji. And and that and, and and adds to what makes I think the peacefulness and yet the impactfulness of them on and off the field so significant. And so to know that, like, uh, I had another friend. He brought his uh, his rugby program, his high school rugby program, down to Fiji. They made a movie about it. Um, uh, this team called ISAF, and it like they they did kind of a comp a, a movie of all these places they went like. Uh, I think um, Italy and Brazil and everything. But when they went to Fiji, it was like there was a, a change. Like it was the first time like the movie like really all connected incredibly well together. And all of a sudden, everybody just seemed in sync. And then it was like introspection. Everybody's like learning about themselves and then finding like their 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 Fijian brother, their Fijian sister. In, in like it felt very, like I said, very very soulful very very soulful in it and to even hear that even from you and then obviously the amount of work that you came like after you came back from fiji i mean and you were there for four months like after you came back home to switzerland like what was your perspective change coming after that it was hard i mean um the first three weeks i was really sometimes i hear the word like egg because i was i was the first time white <laughs> I mean, in Switzerland, in Switzerland, I'm, I'm the I'm the Latina. The darkest I'm, I'm, one. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I'm I'm like coffee, and and then in Switzerland, and in Fiji, I was white. <laughs> First time, I was I was uh, yeah the white girl, and then I start. For me, it was really important. I go don't go there like a tourist. Mm -hmm. I go there with respect and with with open hands. I want to learn and take that much that I can from this country. So I, I, I was only with um, local peoples together mm -hmm. and I um, met Bulo 
I think you know her from uh, the US team also. And um, sometimes I text her, what I can wear tonight? Is it okay when I wear this and stuff like this? I mean, also like now I have a Sulo. I, I, I'm wearing a Sulo. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's the a wrap. Dress. Yeah, it's a dress like in Fiji mm -hmm. because I feel so comfortable with the, cu the culture. I start to really love and feel the culture. So um, I I really try to go with them together so and i at least i live really in a house with some other rugby girls together and i i uh the, the first week i lost three kilo just for workout i mean we have at the morning at five o'clock because wow. yes it was the only time that it's not too hot and um, five o'clock at the morning we have gym session and running session then at the afternoon at five o'clock, we have again two hours of rugby training. So it was really hard. And for a prop <laughs> to start like this to work out, I lost, I lost so much kilos. It was <laughs> easy, easy to lose them. At that point is where you go like, yes. oh, oh, this is how you lose weight? Oh, I've been, I have been, not, I've not been told to this what happened. So simple, go to Fiji oh. and work. So, and then, um, I live in a village and um, this is something what really, really also it's, it's for me so it touched me. I mean, yeah. I come home, it was dark. I come home, I was uh, uh, tired from training and I was Auntie Angie. I was not more, no more the girl from Switzerland. I was no more the, the, the white girl. I was Auntie Angie. Nice. And so a little girls come around to me and say, hey, Auntie Angie, um, here is your, your dinner. And I said, why? Yeah, because we know that you are hungry, you come from training. So people, they have almost nothing. Give me her food after my workout because they know I'm tired. And this is, I don't know, I, I, never, I never see that in other countries, people like this, you know, this is, yeah, this is amazing. And after four months, I have to go home. Um, I, I broke my ligaments on the last tournament. Um, I have to go home for my ligaments because I have to get an operation here in Switzerland. And I, I cry the whole way home. And uh, the girl from the um, airplane, the stewardess, she come to me and say, why are you crying so much? And I say, because I don't want to go home. I feel home here in Fiji. And she say, you don't go away. You will stay in Fiji with your heart. We, you cannot lose the island in your heart. You, will, you, you are a Fijian. You are one of our family. And then she asked me in uh, Hong Kong, what are you doing now? And I say, I stay 10 hours here and wait that my fly go back to Switzerland. She said, no, you come with us. You are a Fijian. You come with us. And she take me to her hotel room and um, let me shower, take me for dinner, give me some dinner and bring me back to the hotel room and say, sleep a little bit and rest that you can fly back to Switzerland. So she, was, she never seen me before. Wow. She never met me before, but she trusts me, her hotel room, and give me everything what she has that I feel comfortable to fly back to Switzerland. And this is so much love. And this is speechy. This is I mean, every country has bad things and good things. It's normal. But the, 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 the spirit and the, I don't know, this is amazing. And then I come home to Switzerland and I have this operation and I feel alone. Hmm. I feel really, I have a lot of friends, but I feel, I was lost in my mind. I was lost time long, yeah. It was a hard time to come back and feel me back home here. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> you know, I think it's, 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 it's been one of the most important things when it, it, it does come to rugby because I think that it's, Oftentimes, many people, um, you know, wouldn't have naturally had that opportunity to have it. Because, I mean, think about it. Other than you playing rugby, at what point would you have thought about saying, I'm going to go to Fiji? 
like just randomly. Uh, it, it most likely wouldn't have happened because there was a connection that you had. It was with, within this sport. And I think that has played importantly. I know I did, I did this trip into Asia um, for two months this last year. And I'd gone to Asia basically since uh, 2016, 2017, going back. Outside of rugby, there has never been a time in my life where I was just like, oh, yeah, let me just go to Asia. I'm like, ah, why not? Because it just, it never sat. When I went there, it was, it was, it was like my reawakening. It was like, okay. One, I, it gave me a reason. I was like, okay, I know what it is that I'm doing here with rugby because this makes sense. You know, and I, I'm something that I knew I could do within Nigeria and the other African countries and, and elsewhere, but it was culture and love is not limited to what it is that we know within our immediate surroundings. Like we might've been taught this, but this aspect is wider than you could ever imagine. Like to be able to have that experience that you had with Fiji is so wildly different than what you could have ever imagined coming into like uh, in, in, in Switzerland or anywhere, just because, it, it, it plays different in your head. Like there's, there's just a different culture that we all have here in the States or Europe or whatever. And you go to these places where a lot of people have poor, mis poor perceptions of the area and have this, this notion. And then you go there and you're like, this, this is nothing like what people are talking about. Like, this is awesome. Like, I mean, I get their struggle, but yo, there's a weird piece that has come with, in this struggle that people have been able to find. And they, I think it's very redeeming for the perspective perception of humanity. If it, mm. if that means anything like yeah. it, it just kind of changes the way that you look at the, the world. And it's, there's a lot of bad, but it's not, it doesn't feel as imbalanced as, as it always seems if you're looking at it from what they're, what's being told to you. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, what, what is also, I mean, there are some lot of mean, memes um, on social media that go in a rugby bar and you have friends. Right. And this, this is true. This is true. I mean, you see, I was in, in San Francisco last year. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I, since I play rugby, I have friends on the whole world. Yeah. And this is this is really really amazing you you find friends everywhere and you i don't know you trust people who play rugby because you have one same passion um i have a friend from england they playing for a tournament here in switzerland in Neuchatel, and one of them can't go back in to the to uk again because they have some pro uh, some problem with the people nothing bad just a little bit just, properly. Mm, I understand so a friend of them texted me hey Angie we have a problem Big Nick it's not able to come back to UK he's stand on the on the airport in Geneva and I say okay no problem I travel with the train to, to Geneva take this big huge man <laughs> and bring him to my home and I say live in my my apartment with my friends together and I'm you can stay here as long as you need. And when you can go back to your home, he lives in Australia normally, then you go and as long as you don't need to pay money, we are a rugby family, we help each other down. And this is, this is, yeah. So this is normal for me. I help people from rugby if they really need help. And I feel so much support and help from other people from rugby. So. This is this is really a huge family and this is amazing. Agreed, agreed. No, I I was it was the funniest thing whenever uh, you and Natalie were on. I was like, yo, I'm telling you, it was the wildest coincidence. It was a wild. Oh, but please, the word is so small. Natalie is Colombian. You're right. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> and she lives many years ago in Switzerland. So yeah. She's yeah. like, that's, that was, I didn't actually, you know what? Until you just said this right now, it didn't even go that far down to me. I got the Colombian. I forgot the Swiss component of it as well, too. And that is, but that is what makes it wild. It, it's, it is, it is such a small world. It is a massive community within a small world that is spread out 
and you're right. Every time you do like rugby people, it is family and you, you, you'll do the effort because there is, I don't know. It's it, it. That's why I say no matter where you go, like there's a similarity of the rugby culture. It might be seen through the eyes of their respective culture, like yeah. national culture, but rugby has the same basis and, and, and it is a very uniquely, a uniquely interesting phenomenon to say the least. Yeah. I mean, I know exactly we have a WhatsApp group of my team and I know it's 12 o'clock up by night. I feel bad. I need help. I text one or two people will answer me. What is wrong? Can I help you? Mm-hmm. Maybe some people are sleeping, <laughs> but the, when someone see that someone needs help, you try to help each other every time. Right. And this feels so good. So you are never, I, since I play rugby, I am no more alone. That's good. That's mm-hmm. so amazing. Angie, look, I, I have loved it. Look, we're going to have the, another conversation again in the near future because I, I enjoy these. <laughs> Um, but I have to work. I have night shift at the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> look, look, look. One way or another, I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get some more time. Even if it's not podcast, I'm just get some Angie time. Like, yo, I just need to get some good conversation. Phil, like, hype me up. I guess you know. But you know, Angie, tell them where, uh, tell them people where they can find you and where they can learn more about what uh, you have going on. Ooh, in Switzerland. <laughs> no, I think of course of Instagram. And I, I um, when some people text me some really serious stuff, I mean, it's uh, easy to text me some bullshit, but I will never answer. <laughs> but um, there are some girls and boys, they text me like, you are, um, you can help me. Um, you you give me the, the strength to f- still fight and keep on fighting. And uh, um, you are um, a role model. But for me, it's that really it's weird because I, I'm not a role model. A role model. I'm just Angie. <laughs> I, I I just love when I can so, so, um, support people or give them um, the the straight to believe in herself. Because at least the only role model you have to be for yourself is yourself. So right. um, you you just can take inspiration from people, and that I will really love. And I, I, I'm really touched when people say, you help me to go through this, or can you maybe help me? I don't feel comfortable. Or some girls, they text me, I'm scared coming back from injury. I'm scared to have a game tomorrow. And I try to support them and say, don't give up. Come on, you can do that. When I can do that, you can do that by night. So um, I love this. So if you text me in a really, in a good way, I will try to answer it every time. And um, I. I I love to see more of this rugby world, and um, I say always with my bestie, um, she is um, play with me um, rugby in Angels uh, Lala, the Brazilian one, and we will love to be um, rugby pirates, tra- <laughs> traveling through the whole world, playing for every team, fun team. I mean, to be realistic, playing for a lot of teams on this right. world and make rugby popular and bring more attention to, to rugby because rugby is amazing and it's the best thing what can happen in my life yo i couldn't have even said it better myself i love it angie thank you so much thank you too thank you <laughs> yo guys that was i hope you guys enjoyed that as much as i did um thank you angie for coming on Really appreciate it, guys. Check her out. Definitely hit her up on Instagram. Definitely want to really, really have her on your side. Let's check out what she does. Uh, it is, it is, it is good stuff. It is good stuff. And guys, definitely check out some of our other episodes. Uh, last week we spoke with uh, Chise Belu of Pedal, talking opportunity and uh, education opportunity, work and education opportunities for rugby athletes. We spoke with Phil Thiel, former USA Rugby 15's hooker and former player for the Saracens. Uh, Spoke with Naya Tapper, uh, uh, USA Women's Rugby 7's and 15's, Dave Rimes, uh, um, Kyle and Tiana Granby, and there's so much more. So, guys, check it out. I really appreciate you guys 
uh, listening to this. You can find us on at Gift Time Rugby on all social media platforms. Uh, and please like this uh, podcast. Please leave a review. It is everywhere, either on Anchor.fm or Spotify or um, Apple Podcasts. Let us know what you think about it. Please share it with your friends if you feel like there was value that came from this for you. And again, come back again next week. Tuesday, we're dropping these, and hopefully we're able to grow more and more. want to make sure that I'm, we're informing you about the opportunities and networks that you can get through this rugby culture. So my name is Gift Gift Time and Bailey. You guys have a great rest of the day, and stay safe, stay healthy, and stay in good, uh, good mind. Cheers.